This is a video that serves to discuss game loops for the project Under Berlin. Brian Wirtz of Game Designing describes a gameplay loop to be a loop of actions undertaken by the player, most often the main actions defining the game. It can be best considered to be a collection of systems and mechanics that flow into one another to achieve a repeated set of objectives, comprising the overall game experience. These objectives can be anything, from reaching a goal at the end of a level to advance, to defeating enemies to gain access to a new area. While this core loop does describe the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay progression, it does so whilst also ignoring the additional systems and nuances that most games offer. This is where the secondary and tertiary loops come into play, specified by both Jordan Brown of UAT and Miguel Sickert to describe the minute-to-minute -minute and longer-term progression and objectives respectfully. The specification of what constitutes a loop in game design is largely arbitrary, existing as a design framework to outline repetitions in a game's systems, either during development or during the analysis of published works. Game systems as game loops can include, but are not limited to, economic systems, social systems, combat systems, and so on. In analyzing the gameplay loops of survival horror games, we can gain an understanding of how their unique mechanics and systems flow into one another to create an engaging gameplay experience. In this section, we will look at present and past titles and break down their loops. Starting with the core loops of Signalis, we can see that the survival aspects are large at play, with a persistent need to attend to the player's collected resources, items, and weapons all the while engaging with or evading the game's many enemies. In some instances, these two loops feed into one another, expecting the player to have collected munitions to fight with or dispatching enemies to collect items. As a key inspiration to many contemporary survival horror games, Resident Evil follows many of the same gameplay beats as Signalis does. Its most identifiable secondary loops includes its puzzle loop and its exploration loop. In the former, players identify puzzles and begin a search for their solutions in order to progress to new areas, while in the latter, players are expected to check on maps for areas that they've not yet accessed, which then may lead to discovering even more new areas to explore. This exploration loop can be found in the level design of many games, such as those in the Metroidvania genre. Lastly, Silent Hill 4 The Room opts for much slower, drudging gameplay on top of its combat and exploration loops, locking the player in a dreamlike world with uncanny area layouts, sluggish combat, and switching from third-person to first-person perspectives when entering the game's titular room. The narrative progression and activities engaged with throughout the game act as an example of Silent Hill 4's tertiary game loops. Ultimately. The activity reward loop directly influences the final narrative outcome, providing the player with one of four endings based on how they chose to act. A sense of agency in the game world can make a game's ending feel more justified due to the player's actions, either for better or for worse. These identified game loops are beneficial to an understanding of ways players progress through survival horror games, as well as showing the variety present to keep them engaged and immersed as they continue further on into a game's story.